A red sun rises. Blood has been spilled this night. M my blood. My blood has been spilled. Hello there, and welcome back to Vintage Story. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We are going to be making a lot of use of our blast bloomeries. I don't know why I want to call them blast furnace. I'm going to be making a lot of use of these bloomeries today. I have also have two more crafted. I am freezing. Uh, and I have enough raw bricks here that I'm going to fire up in a minute that we can make another two. As you can probably see, I went and made a little bit of green glass the other day because I wanted to see what it was like. And it's pretty simple. You just, okay, I forget now if it's shift click or just click to add. It says it right here. Okay, you just place the lantern and you right click on it with the glass and it'll swap them out. If you have anything other than quartz glass or clear quartz, uh, Anything other than clear quartz, I think it gives you the glass back. Let's grab a regular piece of glass. Yeah. Now we have a little bit of spooky color outside. And I thought it was fitting that, uh, that we give the bismuth bronze lanterns green light. That one's green too, but it's not as green as the other one is for whatever reason. Now it is. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to grab. Here we go. Some more hay straw. I'm going to need a few more sticks. Oh, I've got plenty of sticks. And I'm going to just get these started up so I can leave them running. And then we will have. I need to grab some heat. <laughs> Forgot about that. It's kind of important. Uh, and then we'll have new bricks for our new bloomeries later on today. I will also, what time is it? 5 a.m. It takes, I think, 18 hours for bloomery to fully heat up. So I'm going to wait until closer to noon. Fill one, wait about an hour, fill the other one. That way the ores will be done Slightly staggered because we have a lot of work to do to make those ores usable. So we have five stacks of 64 chunks of magnetite. I am not sure how much each bloomery can hold. Let's grab a hundred to start with. And, uh, uh, yep. Use control. It's quicker. <laughs> Okay, well, that's 102, so it can clearly hold more than 100. That's another 90. It can hold 120, which is enough to make six ingots. And then charcoal takes six. All right. And let's fire up the first bloomery. All right, and this is going to take... I forget how long. I think it's 18 hours. It might be less. Yep, I don't remember. Um, if it's 18 hours, that means it should be done tomorrow morning, which would give me plenty of time to actually forge stuff. I can actually remove these for now. I'm going to wait about an hour and then fill up that one as well. But what I'm going to do between, uh, well, between now and then, is we're going to run over to our accidental bear farm yeah that was not fun and so i did a little reading online it looks like either light level and or tall grass calls bears to spawn so we've lit up in here which should prevent bear spawns but to i'm gonna wait a bit i'm gonna hopefully not see any more bear spawn if bears do spawn we'll be replacing the grass with compacted dirt, grass won't grow there. But what I also read was that while bears can jump three blocks high, they cannot jump over a, a fence, but they can hit mobs on the other side of a one block high fence. So I'm going to be upgrading all these fences to be two blocks high. And uh, that way the bears cannot hit anything on the other side of the fence. Uh, it does change the look a little bit, but 
until I can iron out the no bear spawns, I'm... Eh, I can leave that side. There's nothing in there. I'm uh, willing to make do with having it look slightly less ideal. And by the time we're done with this, we should be ready to fill the bloomery again. Yep, that's going to be good enough for now. All right, we need 120. There we go. When we're done, we'll have 12 ingots of iron. Well, 12 iron bloom. We then have to hammer them. So I'll show you that when we get to it. And um, I may have been incorrect. I think we're going to need 20 ingots for an iron anvil. But that really doesn't matter right now because I don't have borax. You need borax to make the anvil. So we're just going to be making a few iron tools. So uh, let's see how long this actually takes. Little bit of advice, I just remembered watching an episode of Radamon's Let's Play of Vintage Story is keeping a hammer and a pick in storage somewhere in case for whatever reason you break your last hammer, you break your last pick, you're not stuck in a situation where you have no way of mining ore and you have to go back to picking up copper off the ground. I do have some tin bronze bits here. I also have some copper bits. So in worst case scenario, I could always pull out one of my molds and pour out a hammer or pickaxe mold, but I had the extra ingots setting aside. I just went, crafted up a new pickaxe head, new hammer, stuck them up there. And now they are in deep storage in case I ever run out of luck. <laughs> In the meantime, I did craft up two additional hammer heads plus an extra hammer I've already made because this hammer doesn't have much life left in it. And when this is done, it's going to require a lot of hammering. So I think I'm probably going to go through two full hammers just getting the iron ready to be used. This my wolfhound here tricks me so many times when I walk in and uh, I'm like, Oh, it's a bear. No, it's my dog. Oh, the uh, first of the bloomeries finished up, which means it only takes 12 hours. That's good to know. All right, so we have iron bloom. Put it on here. Take our hammer. And we start chipping off the slag. Now, there is a more efficient way to do this if you had a health hammer, which we obviously don't. You could do uh, you, you stick the bloom on the health hammer and it will do most of this for you automatically. Actually, I think it'll do the whole process for you automatically. But yeah, we don't have that sort of technology. I need to build a windmill for that. That was actually pretty, pretty easy. And the reason I staggered them, let's see, that's now done, <laughs> is so I have time to work on my first batch while the second batch was still cooking. Since this does take a minute each. Anyway, now we've got our first iron ingots. We have officially entered the iron age. Once I am done, Casting these, well, um, hammering these out into their proper form. I will look at making our first iron tools. We're going to want... I don't like that it defaults to heavy hit. Uh, of course, that is still better than it defaulting to... Uh, what's it called? Split. Anyway, what was it saying? Uh, we'll see about making our first iron tools. We're going to want iron hammer and an iron pick. I don't know if we really need any other iron tools at the moment. However, starting to switch everything over to iron would be more efficient. They last longer. Uh, I think these are starting to cool down. 
Yeah. I don't know at what point I can no longer work these. Right now, it's at 720, and I've still got no problem shipping away. Oh, we got a storm coming. Maybe I should move. Nah, I was going to say maybe I should move my my setup into my basement. But if we have um, 700. Okay, when it drops below 700, you can no longer. You can no longer work it. Mm -hmm. Can I? I cannot place it on the ground. Can place them in here. And you. Okay, still got a bit of time left for this one. Okay, what was I saying? I was going to say I can move my stuff down to my basement, but with the effects, the visual effects you get during the rift storm, that would make working on voxel stuff very disconcerting, kind of dizzying. Yeah, not going to do that. So I'm going to try to get as much of this done as I can now. And... After the storm, we'll see about making proper tools. Well, we survived the storm. Mostly. The uh, armor did not fare so well, but that's a matter for later. I did manage to heat up and work on two more pieces of bloom before the storm actually hit. And now we're going to make our first iron tool. Let's go off the iron pick. Nice and easy. Ooh. It's clicked. <laughs> I say easy and then I misclick, right? Oh well. We didn't ruin it, so that's the important part. And let's make an iron hammer. Uh, of course, as soon as I put the bloom in to heat it up, the coal runs out. Looks like you can heat up about Two, uh, one bloom per charcoal. So. Yeah, it's not as efficient as if you get the timing on the bloomeries right, where you can heat up six bloom in the bloomery, pull it out, hammer them all out, and uh, by the time you're done with the last one, the next set from the bloom, uh, the next bloomery should be about done. But, yep, yeah, this does still work and yeah I noticed I could do that instead of trying to move all the pieces around you can yeah you can do this way I mean you still got to move the uh, the voxels over right so it's not like you're not doing work you just don't have to worry about puzzles as much. Now you see, this one is done now too. Ooh, well, it's mostly done. We might be able to finish this one before time runs out. And by time, I mean it uh, cools off too much. Alright, but there we go. We are officially in the Iron Age. We have our first iron hammer and our first iron pick. Let's compare the pickaxe to the bronze one. Okay, so tin bronze, 
durability of 450, mining speed of six on stone, six on metal, six on ore. The iron pickaxe, thousand durability, so over twice as good. 7.5 for stone, ore, and metal. That's pretty good. So we'll notice a bit of an improvement in mining speed, but the durability is double that of the tin bronze pick. So I should definitely use up what's left of the tin bronze. But in the morning, we're going to go over to... Where is it? Right here, where we found some meteoric iron. We're going to mine that up. We can't do anything with it yet, but we can at least mine it up. And I know there was another meteoric iron vein somewhere, but because of all the snow, I can't see the silver-ish pick I used to denote where the vein was. So that may have to wait till the spring. <laughs> That rift has been there for about three days now. And I do know they can stick around for a while, but yeah, I was not really expecting it to. We're going to head off to where the meteoric iron is and uh, hopefully not run into anything because I did not recover much health over the night. I could make a healing poultice, but I really, I didn't really worry about it too much. That may not have been a smart idea. I have seen bears over here. And here's the meteoric iron. It's not much of it. Wow, that took a while. Okay, that gives that gave us four pieces. Which two pieces turn into one ingot. So that's two ingots worth. So if that keeps up, this will be about eight ingots worth of iron. Not that one gave me six. Nice. So there's a little bit of variance. That one gave me five. And that one gave me three. Yeah, it looks like. Okay. Uh, well, that is enough for nine ingots. That is taken care of. And as I said, we can't do anything with this meteoric iron because we need bauxite. And bauxite, borax, not bauxite, borax comes in either chalk, chert, conglomerate, limestone, claystone, sandstone, or shale. None of which we have around us here. So we are going to have to go out exploring again to find a different rock strata where we can find ore. Um, not ore. Find the... Oh boy, that would not be a fun trip. Find the correct rock type. Oh, we have our... Um, I can't open a thing. Baby, and so we can start milking our... You, although it does say she will become aggressive when we do so. So let's go grab a bucket. Too stressed to be milkable. And now she wants to hit me. I think I should probably sneak next time. Yeah, she wants to hit me still. Maybe we should see about giving her some more food. Nah, we're just not having any luck with this right now. We have to wait till later. Nope, she wants to hit me again. But yep, we have our first generation of sheep. We'll have to see about catching a few more sheep and uh, then transfer the baby out of that back pen and put it into the middle pen. Well, it's been a few in-game days. I did go out quite a bit. I had found... Oh, where was it? Over in this area, I had found some terra preta when I was out exploring or, well, should I say running back from over this way? I forget what I was doing out there already. But yeah, I had found Terra Preta, so I went, I gathered up some of it. There was only eight blocks of it. 
So I've now added that to our farm. As, as I said, I'm slowly replacing all the soil in here to be Terra Preta. And I'm not going to till it until I've decided if I'm going to move this or not. Because you break one of these, they break. They disappear. If I tilt the Terra Preta, Terra Preta and break it, then the Terra Preta is gone. And I don't feel like losing Terra Preta. I was also, well, I was thinking about the animals we got. The sheep were... We can't, we can milk the you, but we're not having much luck with it. And uh, I can't even get in there right now because the ram is blocking the way. Um, so we can technically milk her, but she is not very much. Okay, the ram is actually blocking me every time I move. She's not very receptive to the idea. <laughs> let's let's put it that way. And yeah, she gets mad. I get no milk. And it's because, well, she is not really domesticated. You know, she's a Gen 0. Our lamb here is a Gen 1. And like with the chickens where they get scared and they will run from the player, your lambs or well the ewes will not really be receptive to being milked until you reach i think it's generation five it may be as soon as early as gen three but i think it's gen five uh before gen five you can but they'll get mad i think after gen five they won't get mad so it might be a while before we actually get access to cheese but that's fine because looking at the uh Recipe for cheese, uh, cheese making here. We're going to need, well, okay, pickled vegetables. We've got those. We're going to need salt. Mm, where was it? Here, add salt to the milk curds or curd, curdled milk. I don't have salt. I haven't found halite yet. So we're going to have to keep looking for halite, which is going to be useful because, I mean, salt is salt. It's, <laughs> there's a reason many, many wars will fall over salt in the history of humanity. So we're going to go looking for salt. Uh, does it say what rock type it spawns in? Oh yeah, I looked at this earlier, I think. All the same ones that Borax spawns in. So we're gonna have to go look for better rock types. And then we'll find hopefully Borax, hopefully some salt, and then we can actually make an anvil and make cheese. Well, once we have milk. All that's a while away still. Meanwhile, I did go in here and I made another Langstroth uh, hive. And this was our first one we made. This is the second one. I took our full skip that was back here. I put it in this one. I moved our ceramic hive back there. So we got three ceramics and three, uh, sorry, two Langstroth. I am completely out of wax again, though. All the honey we had found during our adventure last week that was used with what I had already saved up. And we had the exact amount of wax to make all the boards. We actually don't have any more wax or any more boards to make frames. So that second Langstroth Hive has absolutely no frames in it. But the other one has eight, I think. So I could always just pull four out and stick it in that. That's a, that's a valid option until I get more wax. So I think what my next plan of action is, I've got a nice iron pick. I've got my bronze pick that's left. We need a lot of cobblestone. I need to finish my walls. I also need to finish my towers. I also need to pull all the ones over here down because I messed up somewhere over there. So I'm going to need to recount my numbers make sure everything's in the right location replace all my walls build the towers and that's going to take a lot more cobblestone a lot more walls and then we'll actually have our base outlined so that's something i'm going to be doing between episodes is just collecting stone but then i also want to figure out where i want to put my second field we're going to have a second field maybe a third i was thinking over here depends on what it ends up looking like with 
the layout. And that's going to be specifically for growing pumpkins and flax. And I'll alternate back and forth so that they have a chance to replenish. Uh, they do use different nutritions, right? Pumpkin is potassium and flax is... No, sorry. Pumpkins are phosphorus and flax is potassium. So, yeah. And I mean, if I do three fields, I could always do like a... Um, oh, that might be an idea, actually. Do three fields. Have a potassium field, a nitrogen field, and a phosphorus field. And just cycle between the three. That would take a lot more terra preta, though. And I definitely do not have enough compost to make a lot of high fertility soil. Eight compost for one high fertility. And I have, I have enough for three. <laughs> No, sorry, six. I can math. So yeah, it's not gonna cut it. We're gonna have to actually find we're gonna have to find either a lot of terra preta or make this field terra preta, make these not, and then figure that out later. I was thinking, we live right next to this trader and Yes. Yes, I know. We we don't see you too often. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, uh, we never really give him a visit. So let's uh let's uh trade with him for a bit. I saw he had a couple more tapestries. We have all of the nightfalls. We don't need any nightfall. But he has two pieces of salvation. And he has ambush. And uh, I brought gears. He says... No, he doesn't want my peridot or my emeralds, I don't think. Yeah. But he will take some of my uh there we go so my pete he'll buy demand of two of 12. so that makes it a bit easier uh cheaper he buys beeswax i'm out of beeswax uh diamond high diamond medium i have diamond low he doesn't want any of my gems okay but we'll buy these three tapestries if I can get all these tapestries together, it looks like I'll be able to continue to unlock some more lore bits. Which, you know, I like the idea of that. But also we get to... Oh, we had another tapestry in here, Seraphim. Right. Okay. Uh, let's put that there. Let's put... That's a... That there. Nope. That one goes there. We need two more of that. And then this one. I'm going to need to find more wall space. <laughs> yeah, let's take the painting down. Let's put that. Yeah, it looks like a beginning piece. So let's put the beginning piece there. And we can pay it, put. And put the painting there. Okay. So we got a little more tapestries. When we actually complete them, we'll get more lore. Which we can go read. I actually, I haven't read the uh, the newer stuff. We got a bit more lore to get through. Not going to do that today. It's going to take a little while. Here we go. The tapestry. Oh, okay. Two. Oh, two dot nightfall. So this must be the second bit of tapestry lore. So maybe m the morning here would be like lore one. And ambush would be lore three. So we'll... Well, figure that out eventually. Until then, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a wonderful day, and I hope to see you next time. Later.